So what's the most important cause of chest pain? Well, I'd argue that it's myocardial infarction. Why? Because it's by far the most common of the three killers that cause chest pain. So here's what I'm talking about. According to this research, if you have chest pain and you walk into an emergency department, your chances of having serious cardiovascular disease are greater than one in two. Even in primary care or family medicine, although gastrointestinal and musculoskeletal problems are more common, you still have about a one in six chance of having serious cardiovascular disease. Here's another way of looking at it. Over the last nearly 20 years of family practice, I've seen maybe two people who have had aortic dissection, somewhere between 10 and 20 patients perhaps who have had a pulmonary embolus. But over the same period of time, I've seen hundreds of people who have had myocardial infarction. That's why it's particularly important to get good at diagnosing myocardial infarction. But which symptoms are the most useful? We've just learned that with referred pain, chest pain could be coming from a number of different places, not just the heart. Well, that's where these guys come in. The folks from the Journal of the American Medical Association have put together a bunch of research that helps us with the evidence-based clinical examination. Now, they looked at all of the classic symptoms of myocardial infarction, the chest heaviness, the sweating, the pain getting worse when you exerted yourself, and a bunch of others. But it turns out there was only a few that actually made a difference in your diagnosis. And here they are. So what you see here are symptoms that increase the likelihood that you're having a myocardial infarction, and symptoms that decrease the likelihood that you're having a myocardial infarction. The numbers in brackets are likelihood ratios. You'll learn more about those later. For now, just remember that anything over two on the positive side can be useful to rule in the diagnosis, and anything 0.3 and lower can be useful to rule out the diagnosis. As an example of how to use these numbers, let's say Mrs. Jurgens is in your office and you give her about a 50-50 chance of having angina or, or a myocardial infarction. And then she explains to you that the pain actually goes into both of her shoulders. Well, that high likelihood ratio associated with pain going to the shoulders increases her risk of having a myocardial infarction significantly, maybe up to 90%. On the other hand, let's say Mr. Paseo is in your office and you give him about a 20% chance of having a myocardial infarction. Well, if he then tells you that his pain is worse when he takes a deep breath, well, that negative likelihood ratio actually brings down the odds of him having a myocardial infarction to the 5% range, the range where you'd be much more comfortable sending him home. So the research has shown that these seven symptoms or features are the most useful discriminators when you're looking at someone's possibility of having a myocardial infarction or not having a myocardial infarction. And that's why I want you to know them. Now, it doesn't mean that the other classic symptoms of myocardial infarction are not useful. It just means that maybe you need a certain expertise and a combination of all the others to make them useful. But for now, these ones that have been studied and shown to make a difference are the ones that I want you to remember. So that's it for myocardial infarction, the most important diagnosis in our whole chest pain schema. Why? Because it's common and because it's deadly.